Hi everyone. Welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Mustjik. Today we're going to be talking about the French pochoir print. Now this was popular uh, in the late 1880s to about uh, 1950, especially in the Art Deco period. Now I have a couple of samples for you. This is George Lepop, a uh, French artist, uh, to show you what a pochoir print looks like. So it's very simple imagery, uh, outlining, um, simple colors. Here's another one by Lutus Lautrec. Again, very simple colors. You can see the outline here. Very popular for doing uh, reproductions for books, for posters, um, invitations, whatnot. But unfortunately, it was a very expensive and labor-intensive project. We're going to be working with uh, one of Josh's photographs, um, is his snail. And uh, I did it in black and white. And then, uh, then we start cutting pieces out. Now the French style is to ink the individual pieces that you cut out and then fit them back together like a jigsaw puzzle. And all the individual um, sections um, were fit together and then printed in etching press. But of course now we have the gel plate and we don't need a press like that. And it's going to be uh, so much fun trying this method and see how it works for us. So let's get to the plate. So I ran a preliminary print just to make sure everything was working. Uh, this is um, blue, the Novo Blue, and um, uh, high flow um, uh, diazosine violet purple. Um, and it's an open fluid paint. So we'll try that again. We know this is going to work. And uh, I'm using a black and white copy of uh, Joshua Blanc's um, snail and we're going to get a little bit of the blue. It's relegated over there because it's dangerous. I've already got blue all over me and everything else so it's out of sight and hopefully going to behave itself. And we're going to add maybe just a touch of the purple. And just have to open it up a bit. <laughs> That's just difficult. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And we're just going to run it together here. Now the trick with transfers is to have them um, almost transparent. Don't work with it too long because these are not the open acrylics, so they dry faster. And um, get your image in line. Use your plate as a stamp. Make sure it lines up. Flip it over as usual and take your barren. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a transferable image. Don't wait too long to do that. Have a peek and we'll see. Yes, looks good. Okay. So that's and some of these are interesting too when you've actually overcolored uh, a black and white print. You can, another thing to play with. They're quite lovely. This one is a little dark but workable. So now we have to wait um, to make sure that's dry. And just uh, run around and sing a song and do something. <laughs> fun for a minute until that dries. Now here's where it becomes tricky because, oh, and I'm using the uh, Artist Loft um, unbleached titanium. 
it's a really great color. And it doesn't really color the print all that much, but it releases this uh, base coat. So you want to roll this quickly. This is dries really fast. And take off enough paint so that you can see the image underneath. And you have to work fast or when you pull a print there'll be white spots because it hasn't lifted properly. Now as soon as you see the image you're good to go. And then again using it the plate as a stamp. Get that down there. And Again, don't take too long to transfer the image and then start pulling it off. If you take too long, you're going to have a lot of white showing. And I think we did good this time. Awesome! <laughs> That's just great. Okay, so this will be the base for our pochoir print. And I would just let it dry for a second. So we'll set that aside. So here's the first one. See, uh, you see the difference because I waited just a little bit long and it dried a bit so you have these white spots. And that's not what you want. You want a nice image. You want to see the little antenna. I mean, we can work with this one because it doesn't matter. So now we're ready to print. Now in pochoir, uh, printing, what happens is that you are blocking out certain areas, sort of negatively, right? And then, uh, so that's the area that's going to be printing. So what you do is you line up the pages. This is eight and a half by 11. And if you line them up, each time uh, every area will print uh, in, almost in a registration. It's still going to be slightly off because on the first print it's slightly off, right? So, and we could adjust it because I can see the edges. There, that would work. Okay. So, all right, our first color is the background color. And we're going to go from light to dark. And I can see that it's off slightly because we need to make sure that the snail is not going to be overprinted. So we're only printing this area here. So you actually don't need to, um, you know, ink up the whole plate. So I think we're going to stick with the blue and violet and maybe just add a little bit of uh, maybe a touch of my um, uh, transparent red iron oxide. Okay, my violet. Just a touch. And roll that out. I'll probably roll out most of the plate because there's this end and this end that you want to be covering. I'm going to add a touch of this. And it will have the appearance of a few little spots and things. So it's not too boring. We could put texture in there, but we don't want that much detail on the back. You know, we could add some strange textures and stuff like this on there. But let's save that for the foreground. Okay, so now you don't have to worry too much this time about whether it's too fluid or too thick because now you're just going to be, now have we got everything lined up? Okay. And then flip it over. And I 
have to hold it down because it might move. It's so we're just printing the background now. And okay, so we have an interesting background. And we can peel that off. So that's layer one. You can do as many layers as you've got the patience for um, doing a stencil, for cutting stencils, so it can get uh, quite detailed. I've kept it really simple for this tutorial. And of course, it's a good idea to use simple colors just like the Picasso and uh, Matisse and so forth did, uh, making it more of a graphic image. That would be good. So the next one is a foreground. So we're placing it on the print, lining things up as far as you can see the edges. So. That's good, okay. So, okay, what do we make the foreground? Well, let's work with our antique, uh, our titanium white, and um, maybe make it a little bit grayish, adding a tiny bit of black, and then we're gonna give it some texture. After all, this tutorial is about patterns, and uh, All right, so we have kind of a nice neutral gray here. Um, could have a bit more color, I might do that. Just, just to, um, you always want to have uh, every color that you're using in every part of your design. It makes the, the whole design cohesive. We're talking about unity. So now we have a few blotches here of the red on the bottom. And we're going to, to use my texture plate that I made and we'll give it some really interesting textures. Make it look a bit rock-ish. Okay, so we're, this should print the foreground. So I'm doing the large um, areas first, and then we'll work our way down to the smaller ones. My paper is buckling a bit. Uh, we could have used tag for this, I guess. This is just um, archival uh, bond paper. And we have some nice textures on our rock. There we go. Okay, that's that layer done. So it's looking interesting already, as you can see. And uh, here's our background, our snail to do, and our leaves. So the next step, I, I believe, is leaves. Okay, so this is a template for leaves. As you can see, there's lots of color on here because I have been working. We've had no end of problems, um, but eventually things have managed to work themselves out. Now, I don't want my leaves to be um, looking dark and grayish, so I'm gonna take this layer off. We'll use our green. Um, this is... Um, Soho Urban Artist Acrylic, Hooker's Green. These are nice, um, very good quality artist paints. Okay. And just going to put a little bit on there. And we're going to add a little bit of the yellow. There's my yellow. 
Uh, this is Museum Primary Yellow. I have, because I'm a painter as well as a printmaker, um, I have a fair amount of different artist quality paints for whatever purpose I need them for. Maybe it's a bit much on the yellow. We'll put that on the plate here. And we'll mix it a bit. Take some off. Don't really need a lot. Okay, we're gonna roll out our paint here. Again, I don't need to ink the whole plate. Um, just add a little bit more of the yellow in splotches here. Just to give it some character. And the leaves themselves uh, in this particular image don't have a lot of texture. We could put some in if you like. Um, maybe a little bit of bubble wrap. I don't want to give it a lot of texture. And now we have to worry about positioning. And those are the leaves there. You can see the I'm not the best cutter in the world for sure, but you get the point. And all I use is a, a good exacto knife uh, and a cutting mat. It does the job. Okay, here's our leaves lining up, flipping over. And I've uh, inked it all the way across because sometimes I forget that uh, the print reverses <laughs> and that I don't have the other side inked when I should have. Not a good sign. Okay. Uh, I don't think the Beren is all that useful in this case. So most of it's getting it hand done. And we'll see how it inked up. Oh yes. Now we have a bit of texture on the leaves. It's good. Okay, we're off a little bit. We might have to crop that off later. And that is our second to last stencil, our pochoir stencil. Okay, the final one is our snail. And here's our snail. Okay. Now, what color is the snail going to be? I've, um, in the what pieces that we're going to show uh, after the tutorial, I have everything from red to, to, to blue, I think. So it could be just about any color. We do have to clean the plate. Okay, so let's, uh, I think I'll use the, again, we're looking at coordinating and uh, creating unity. So a little bit of that color, that's our transparent iron oxide that's been in almost all the paints used here. A little bit of our antique titanium white. And that might be a little bit too much on the iron oxide, so we'll take some of that off. I'm using a clean I'll try and keep the lightest color at the top there. Roll it off. And, and I want to make it fairly transparent because on our base we have that lovely blue. So let's take more of the color off. might even add a little bit of white at the top there. This is my museum white. And just mixing it a little bit. I think that's better. And brayering off. 
I could have, of course, cut the shell off as another stencil, pochoir stencil. And I'm just going to run a little bit more of that iron oxide at the base. That should do it. And I'll mix the two. Almost a rainbow roll. Okay, fingers crossed this is going to work. Now we have to line everything up. And this one's fairly straightforward. Okay, let's move that over. Get all the stuff out of the way. <laughs> and print. Turn it over. And you'll have to rub with your hand. Smooth out the wrinkles here. Um, papers to use, of course, would be uh, good quality drawing paper, um, tag or um, other heavier papers, yeah. watercolor paper, printmaking paper, of course, which would be lovely. And we have our snail and we can still see some of the detail. And there is our print, our pochoir print. And just a, we'll just crop that off at the end. So not too bad, it's aligned fairly well. Our snail's on a rock, it's got a blue shadow. Turned out not too bad. <laughs> All right. We're running with the first transfer that we did. I'm going to leave the paint on uh, the, the, um, the last part we did and uh, we're just going to start adding our stencils. So this one will be a fairly quick, quick one. Okay, background. Um, let's make the background quite dark. Touch of this. We'll sort of reverse what we did in the last one. I'm not going to worry about patterning on this one because. Uh, Oops, a clicker. Can't have clickers. And I think that lines up, doesn't it? Yeah. Tiny bit off. Seemed we were short on the um, right side last time. Okay. Background. This was background. And we have a nice background. All I'm going to do, I think, is blot off with paper towel. We'll do a Robin McClendon where you leave all the little interesting bits on the plate. She's such an inspiration. Okay, next one. That was background. And this one is foreground. And I think we're only going to run a touch of white. And the titanium weight. I 
and a wee smidge of the transparent red iron oxide. And I'm going to take some of the weight off. I think that's a bit much. Okay. Just going to brayer. Again, we don't have to cover the whole plate. And this one, um, we need some good texture. So our little texture plate. And then the under colors that we have will show through. And on this particular transfer, there wasn't a lot of under color. It's maybe little bits and pieces of blue, but that's all. Okay. Move that over. Oops. <laughs> all right. Are we lighting up? Printmaking is not an exact process. That's the joy of it. So, I mean, there are perfectionist people out there that want every edge perfect, and that's fine. But there are also the rest of us who don't. <laughs> and I'll try the Baron just to make sure it's good contact. And I like accidentals and funky things happening. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now that looks very rock-like, doesn't it? All right, that's that layer. Next layer. Now our leaves. Um, let's go slightly crazy here and do uh, maybe fall leaves. Are the snails still out in the fall? <laughs> okay, so we won't use too much of the orange. It's a lovely color. And we'll take it down a little bit with some of the green. Okay. I have to remember this is the side that the majority of the leaves are on, so yeah. we'll just give it a little bit more yellow and a little bit more green here. Okay, lining things up again. Now the difference between what I'm doing and what they did in the 30s for a deco art for their pochoir prints is that they actually, these pieces were actually inked and then they were placed on the plate like a puzzle the way the Japanese and the Chinese did. And then they were butted up against each other and then run through an etching press. So this is sort of a different take on that whole process more of a negative way of printing. And generally they had um, thin pieces of metal. Now, did we print it? Sort of. Uh, I might just do that again. Let's run. I'm just going to splotch this on here. Just needed a little bit more color there. It's definitely too dark. Okay. This yellow is very transparent and doesn't have much. It's not a cadmium yellow. The 
cadmiums or have such good color strength. And of course, they're not very good for us. So it's a color to be careful of. So here, let's try this again. And because we had such a dark under color, um, then that's why the, the print color really has to be pushed a little bit. Okay. Yes, that's better. Now we can see it. And I'm going to cheat a little bit and add some of that color over here. Just to take it down. This is permissible. <laughs> I'm just adding a little. We'll be cropping the edges off anyway. There we go. Okay, our final print quickly is the snail itself. And for this one, I'm going to just wipe the top here. And we'll have to debate. We have um, a light, a dark background and a light foreground, so it should be sort of a middle tone. I'm almost tempted to leave it the way it is. Um, so maybe just a tiny bit of the titanium. All right, so I'm just going to put the titanium on there. I'm hoping it will pick up some of the background colors. And we'll bray her off. Keep it reasonably transparent. Uh, Maybe a touch of the orange, just to create unity again. And now don't, we don't want to obscure any of the nice blue tones here, so this has got to be a very thin coat. Okay. So with all these stencils uh, that I've created, I could just go on and on and do dozens of these. They would make great cards. And um, it's not a long process of printing either if, and the way we're doing it, not like the original pochoir. And the gel plate is certainly an asset. And there we even have a highlight on our snail. Okay. We lost a little bit of the blue, but it's not bad. So there you are. I might just take a... Um, when the paint's still wet, you can do this. Reveal some of the blue. Or you can go over with it. With a... There we go. Now you know several ways of cheating too. <laughs> Again, we can crop that end off and up, up here, and it's not a bad print. We could have, I might just darken the foreground a tiny bit. I like the background, that really turned out well. Okay, let's run the background. So you can do that, you can reprint. So because it's dry, I can redo that. 
and we're just going to make it a titch darker. Um, okay, a little bit of black. And a little bit of our transparent red iron oxide and a touch of the violet. Violet is a good shadow color. Boy, that black is strong, isn't it? I might just run more iron oxide over that. And I'll take it down with some. Take some of it off. Okay. If it hasn't dried yet, we should be able to print it. Yeah. Maybe we'll catch that one edge that wasn't printed. Again. Okay, let's see what happened. Much better. Now there's more contrast and the rock actually looks more And I'm actually going to do the snail again too. I just want to up the color a little bit. It's a little on the dull side. And I don't know what happened there, but. So we're just going to add some orange to that. Need a fairly clean grayer here. have to worry too much about registration because it's, we're only doing that middle section. Okay, wish me luck. Oh yes, much better. Okay, now I don't know what happened in this section here. It's just light hitting there, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes there are glitches, but you get the idea, and it's a lot of fun, so do try it. And again, I think I can pull back some of the blue. And and you can, of course, work into it with your pen and ink and so forth. And I'm just going to take down, I think, the this stuff here. There. Why not? <laughs> Do what you need to. Okay. Maybe even touch a black in there. There are no rules, you make your own, you're an artist. I'm gonna just print a little bit of that on there. There. Okay. We're done. <laughs> All right, so here we are with our little snail, and it's been <laughs> a really beastly session. I must say, and if anything could go wrong, it did go wrong. But we persevered and uh, we have a long ways to go, but um, things are, you know, not too bad. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please uh, like and subscribe and share. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.